Am I audible now? You are audible. So should I start? Right please, away? please start. Uh, uh, one minute. Uh, I'll just present here. So, uh, the topic is the paradigm of phonetics and uh, it, it, it refers to one second. It refers to the dominant approach or theoretical framework in phonetics at a given time, which influences how researchers approach the study of speech sounds. Now, in this webinar, I propose to, uh, what you can say, uh, I propose to point out that these present approaches of uh, phonetics and using what is commonly used in, West, in the Western world directly onto Sanskrit is not, is not right. So that is the aspect which I'm going to deal with and how we can correct it in our traditional way. So I start. Shiksha is concurrent to phonetics. Shiksha or instruction being concurrent with phonetics implies that instruction often incorporates phonetics as an essential component, especially in the early stages of learning. Language is a prerequisite for instruction as instruction is rendered through language. Phonetics, the study of speech sounds, is integral to help children understand the correct pronunciation, rhythm, and intonation of words and meaning. By aligning education with phonetics, learners develop better reading, speaking, and listening skills, leading to a more effective and accurate grasp of the language. Nature endows the organs of language at birth. With its help, a child learns to imitate various speech sounds it listens in its surroundings together with their meaning. At this stage, the instructor, instructor is in the passive mode and the child is in the active mode. Around the age of two to three years, the child starts becoming, becoming compliant to instruction. The child listens and attempts to imitate speech sounds in the form of words. At four years and thereafter, the child is expected to learn to read and write. And it is here that instruction becomes crucial. Instruction becomes directional and dimensional. After four years, until the age of 13 to 14 years, the instructor is in the active role and the child is in the passive role. The child has already learned to speak out words, but on its own account is incapable of resolving them into their component parts, that is letters or akshara. After 14 years, the child is compromised to the language he speaks. That is, he is comfortable with his own phonation of words and feels that he needs no more instruction to speak words correctly. If the child has not learned the proper phonation of words and letters, he cannot change or improve his speech until he opts to improve it on his own account. Therefore, this becomes very important. So, it's, as far as adults are concerned, if adults themselves don't offer themselves for correction, they speak as they speak because they are basically compromised with, their, with the language which they are using to communicate. In all the written languages around the world, the component parts of a word of a particular language are put into the form of an alphabet. The alphabet consists of a set of letters arranged in a fixed order used for writing a language. An alphabet is a writing system that features 
glyphic letters where each represents a distinct phoneme or sound which includes both vowels and consonants a script on the other hand refers to any visual representation of speech a writing system is what you get when you combine a script with a orthography that is spelling rules what is under consideration here is the alphabet which is which in the context of sanskrit is called varna or akshara and not the script the distinction between the alphabet and script is necessary because many languages share a common script but a different alphabet the alphabet is unique to the language it represents in the case of many european languages the script is the same but the alphabet is different in contrast to many indian languages where the scripts are different but the alphabet is moreover the same to the exception of tamil where the vowels are the same but the second third and fourth letter of each consonant class is represented by the first consonant sound not that the second third or fourth consonant sound are not phoned in words they are not represented in the script and so they are not instructed the universality in the alphabet of indian languages comes down from the pratishakyas which is moreover reflected in the devanagari script letters as also in other scripts of indian languages however we find that the alphabet is not recited recited identically in various indian languages especially the vowels which account for the need to change the string of letters in words the effect is more striking where each indian language have different pratyahara letter for declensions of nouns and words in spite of this universality of the structure of the alphabet of indian languages how is it that the string of letters in each indian language show variation on account of which the same object is represented by different words at times of the same genre as in gavi goni gota and at other by totally different words like the word potato which is not native to india is called batata in marathi aloo in hindi and urlagadda in telugu from the above we can conclude that though the alphabet of all indian languages is the same the string of letters in words is not the same which illumines the subtle differences in phonation of the alphabet the most glaring example is the difference in the string of letters in the word dharma becoming dhamma in pali it is with the help of these subtle differences in the phonation that individuals in communities are able to distinguish themselves distinguish between self and non self that is belonging to the same language group or another language group at the same time these subtle differences point out to the plasticity of the human speech organ the question now arises what the phonation of sanskrit letters are the fact that the devanagari script letter sequence distorts the Sans sanskrit language is evident from the way sanskrit is recited or spoken across different regions of india spoken sanskrit has lost its accent the swaras udatta anudatta and torita <coughs> the mother tongue of native indian speakers cannot accommodate the way sanskrit words are spoken it is therefore obvious that the sanskrit alphabet now in vogue that is the devanagari script is incapable of bringing out the sanskrit alphabet more pertinently how can a single veda have so many shakhas each with their own shikshas and mode of recitation had there been uniformity in recitation there wouldn't have been so many shakhas or shikshas for each veda so how can this corruption of the sanskrit language in recitation and speech be restored obviously by going back to the one who conclusively determined and stated how sanskrit words are string he was no other than panini himself scholars need to answer the question as to what was the basis on which he could derive rules that went into the comp comp uh, compilation of the astadhyayi 
the first part is the knowledge of sanskrit words those in the vedas and those in vogue in the community of sanskrit speakers the second is to devise a tool with the help of which one can demonstrate as if the world evolved through a series of metamorphoses later on called prakriya devise subsequently by grammarians the second is to devise a tool with the help of which one can demonstrate as if the world evolved through a series of metamorphoses later on called prakriya devise subsequently by grammarians which are those two tools panini came up with the first one was the it and the second was the savarna however in order to devise these two tools he had to detail each varna and examine their relationship not only at the level of phonation or vikari but still deeper down to the level of articulation or madhyama where he could actually see the articulatory process involved in the phonation and determine the two way relation between letters the it contains a target letter and a letter suffix to it to complete the articulation of the target letter thus the intention of the suffix letter to the target letter is only to completely illuminate the target letter and so become worthy to be elided therefore the suffix letter to the target letter has been rightly called the pratyahara letter pratyahara letter just as the pratyahara of birth is death it is in death that the life cycle of birth is completed a savarna letter on the other hand is a letter which can stand in the place of another letter this i think is a novel concept special to sanskrit grammar but there can be many letters that can stand in place of another letter and therefore groups of letters were assembled which could exchange places these groups of letters then served a dual purpose by suffixing an it at the end of the group this is the best example of the lago principle just as in a single hammer by one of its heads one can beat a nail down a board and with the second remove the nail secondly instead of having an it letter for each letter the it letter at the end of a group served as the pratyahara for each of the letters in the group thus the it in the group a e una as well as, as well as group a e u na a e u is na as well as na is the pratyahara of each of the letters it is ana ina or una you can ana is the pratyahara for all the three letters similarly is the case with the group of letters ja ba ga da da where sh is the pratyahara letter so you can say jasha basha gasha dasha or dasha at the same time a group of letters can be addressed in sequence that is jasha would mean all the letters in between j and sh dasha would mean only the letter d the only shortcoming in such an arrangement is that when one intends to indicate only the first or the second or the third or, uh, letter of a group the rest of the letters that follow in the group also stand indicated thirdly the it on being common to the group internally unifies them that is inversely the it letter demonstrates the internal congruity of the group thus becoming one other's savarna putting these letters in groups with a pratyahara letter also helps in distinguishing one group from another and helps in illumining each of the letter in the group completely that is defines the articulation of e of each of the letter thus enabling an individual to observe their similarity and their difference at the same time being a complete group of letters with a pratyahara letter it assumes the form of a word however different from it by the fact that it does not refer to any other object outside itself as a word does the group only describes itself which is the only objective 
of its compilation. Thus, letters were made to reveal themselves. Now, we, have, we are ready to answer the question as to why the Devanagari alphabet is incapable of becoming an instruction. The Devanagari alphabet was arranged with a conviction that a single consonant letter cannot be instructed without a suffix vowel. And those who arranged the Devanagari script conditioned that the alphabet A is the script, uh, alphabet K in the script is a conjugation of A and as, uh, of K and a suffixed A and so on for all the consonants. That is K, K, that is each consonant is suffixed with a akar. However, we find that the a is not and cannot be an it of, uh, uh, of uh, consonants according to Panini. Therefore, the Devanagari script letters cannot be an instruction according to Panini. Secondly, none of the vowels in the Devanagari alphabet have been uttered together with, with an it. And therefore, secondly, none of the vowels in the Devanagari alphabet have been uttered together with an it and therefore the vowels as occur in the Devanagari are not instructed as would have been desired by Panini. When the groups were identified without duplication, they were ordered and called Sutra, which later on became well known as the Maheshwar Sutras, Pratyahara Sutras or the Samamnaya Sutras. It goes to the credit of Nandikeshwar who linked the Maheshwar Sutras to the Damru. Nandikeshwar was a Nurtya uh, person who wrote on Nurtya before uh, uh, whom? He was the guru to uh, a person who has written on Sangeet. One cannot beat the Damru once. Now here comes a very important, why the each letter? One cannot beat the Damru once. It has to be necessarily beaten at least twice, of which the fun, one, first one is the illuminated letter and the second, the it. Secondly, the Damru naturally embodies Raya, which is of the nature of birth and death. If one were to continuously play the Damru, the subsequent sound is the death of the first and the birth of the next, till when the last beat becomes the Pratyahara. Hence, the sutra halantyam, indicating that the la in hala is the last it, thus making the Maheshwar sutras a single sutra, as the it in the intervening sutras only pave the way for the first letter of the next sutra. In this way, the objective of instructing letters stands achieved with the help of the damaru as a witness as well as the embodiment of la. Sutra, a very novel style of composition, much different from either ruchas or shlokas to shloka form. The rucha or shloka can be easily deconstructed into prose, that is, into sentences with the help of anvaya. However, this is not the case with the sutra form. Thus, a sutra is a product of darshan. This form was then put to use by Panini in his Ashtadhyayi. Patanjali talks about it in the first Anika on how words can be described by words themselves. On the other hand, the script came into existence on account of the absence of an oral tradition and where the erudite, shishta in a tradition could not hand over their knowledge to the subsequent generation orally. A script conveys the knowledge only to those who can read it. However, in order to read, one needs to be instructed. However, the instruction itself occurs with the help of a related symbol in the word, for example, A as in the word apple. Thus, the script has to take recourse to a spoken word, word form to be instructed. But the A necessarily does not take the same form as in the case of the word academic, as it undergoes modulation on account of the following letter. Thus, in order to instruct the alphabet, one needs to be conversant in the language, the alphabet of which is being instructed. Here we see that there is circularity in the script 
the alphabet and the work. The alphabet cannot stand alone without the support of the work. In such a situation, the alphabet does not stand separate ground as a specific phonetic articulation. The next question is whether instruments can be of any help. Here too, the analysis of the sound or the movement of the articulators do not bring out the articulatory process for each sound of the alphabet. At the same time, as we have seen above, that the particular sound in the alphabet gets modulated when it becomes part of a work. Thus, instruments can only give an overview of the articulatory process as well as the sound produced. Evolution of language becomes social because in each individual of the same species, a unique mechanism of production of sounds for communication, particular to the species, has been afforded by nature together with a synchronized system for the appreciation of those sounds, that is the ear. In short, lingual sounds are for others. The need for communication within the members of a community create the requisite niche for the evolution of language. However, as compared to other species of animals, the human organ of speech is plastic. And so we find a, variety, a wide range of human sounds in different languages. This is why Patanjali says that grammarians do not make words. They only regularize them by bringing them to a standard form because individuals use words to express meaning. On the other hand, modern phonetics assigns a particular sound to each letter in a word with the help of the script itself. If one goes through an English dictionary, one will find a pronunciation guide at the bottom of the page describing the sound each letter in the word stands for with the help of words. Such a guide does not exist in Indian dictionaries. The plastic nature of the human speech organ demands that for standardizing phonemes, instruction is not sufficient at the Vaikari level, but has to go down to the level of the Madhyama, that is to the level of articulation. In other words, in order to standardize word form, instruction needs to be at the level of articulation for the alphabet and not at the level of its product, that is Vaikari. In order to achieve this, the that no doubt arise in the rules of the Ashtadhyay, Panini devised the Maheshwar Sutras. Dharma in the case of language is to utter a word within the framework of la. Therefore, it envisages skilled use of letters within a word to achieve the desired purpose, that is communication. All human animals use it skillfully, with the exception of man who uses it as he wills with no regard to laya and hence the necessity of grammar so that he aligns himself with nature. In the case of other languages than Sanskrit, the laya within the word is disrespected and hence those words are called apashabda. This is what Patranjali intends to bring to notice when he compares the words gauhu with goni, gota, etc. Salvation is not social, it is individual. Language and in particular the Maheshwar Sutras are the tool to achieve it. What corrupts him, that is the letters constituting the word, is itself the means to redeem oneself from it. And hence the study of the Maheshwar Sutras in particular and Sanskrit in general. Now, before we proceed, uh, I'll just uh, stop sharing. So, before we proceed, if anybody has questions regarding this uh, deliberation, I would uh, like people to ask questions. And uh, thereafter, uh, Shastri Ji will respond to it and uh, put up his views on this topic. So, if anybody has questions regarding this, I will be eager to dwell on them and answer them to my ability. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Anybody wants to ask any question?
Okay. Uh, you may note down your questions. We will take it up in the end if it are you have. Then uh, now uh, let us request uh, Shastri Garu, TBK Shastri Garu. Let us welcome him uh, first and then uh, let us request. Kapre Mohadeya is there in the group. Are you home? Okay. Uh, if he wants to speak, Kapre Mohadeya, Kavan Kapi Vaktum Kitchen Tiva. Kapre Mohadeya. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, okay. Let us go proceed. Okay. BBK Shastri Karu. Ah, wait, wait. Just I'm setting up my this one volume. Okay. Okay. No problem. Namaskar. Namaskar. Shastri Karu. Namaskar. 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 Atra Kinchit Bhaktum Avakasham Dattavanta Bhavanta Sarvebhyaha Mama Pranamanjali. The concept introduced by Achyut Karveji, Achyut Purushottam Karveji is a very important one. He is addressing the issue of Samskrita Varanaksharas, Samskrita Shikshanam from the music side, that to instrumental music side. And why is it important if the bowl or the cheese, the kruti is to be documented, there has to be some script. And that script has to resonate with a language. Whether it is Tyagaraja Skruti or Anamacharya Skruti, the documentation of the Kruti requires a script. And the script requires Lipi Rupa of the Bhasha Aksharas. Now, when we come to Samskritam, as we understand, what is our given uh, axiom or the reference point? For Sanskrit Vyakarana, we take historically Panini as the reference point, the Munitraya Sampradaya as the Adhara, Panini, Katyayana, Patanjali, and then we get a lot of other later persons, Kashitakara, up to Nagoji Bhatta, and then Siddhanta Kovudi, Bhattoji Dikshita. So that parampara is the Vyakarana parampara. What is the umbrella name for that? The umbrella name for that is Vedanga Vyakarana. So when we talk of Vedanga Vyakarana, the defining frame, it is not the Loka Bhasha, the social language. We are talking of a standard language which is used as a model for rest of the work. So without getting into too much technicality, I want to address very focused questions. First, why is Sanskrit called Vag Yoga by Patanjali and invokes a Vedic no, rucha for that. Vag yoga with Dushyati Napa Shabdi. For that, a lot of explanation is given. But the teaching of Sanskritam as Yoga Bhasha is kind of lost. And why did we lose that? Why did we lose the Vag Yoga tradition? of learning Samskritam. It's an interesting question to pursue. Uh, that requires a different uh, uh, platform and time to explain that. Nevertheless, in Munitraya tradition, Samskritam is called 
Vag Yoga. Teaching tradition goes into three models. One is Bhasha or the Loka Bhasha, Manushi, what we call. The second one is Chandas or the Daivi. And the third one, which is less known, is Yoga Bhasha. What Deva Bhasha. That is why we get several names for Sanskrit. Brahmi to Bharati Bhasha. Gihi Vagwani Saraswati. Then we separate us. Vyaharaha Uptihi Lapitam Bhashitam Vachanam Vachaha. So getting back to the Paninian frame. Defining the character set is the primary thing to go for the language. And how does Panini define the character set? Varna Akshara Samamnaya needed for Samskuta Vyakarana. The basis is called Shiva Sutra. We can go for the Nurta Vasane, Nataraja Raja, Dhana Dhaka, Nava Panchavaram, the Damaru concept and all that. But I focus upon the 14 Shiva Sutras which are given as Varanakshara Samamnaya. So teaching learning Sanskrit starting with the Shiva Sutra is almost a kind of gone tradition in India itself. We have to restore this. This is what Karve, Achut Karveji is pointing out. He came to this conclusion because in the, the music documentation or Akshara production in the tabla, okay, sa, dha, these kind of sounds, it was not easy to identify and connect to Sanskrit. But his guru taught him how to connect all that. So he started looking at the phonation from the Mukha, Vagindriya, the Shabda Smruti, the Shabda Grahana, Ucharana, and then the finger movement on the instrument, the movement of the Damaru, all that. Later, he came deeper. He has shown some videos last time. When the Varna is Ucharita, articulated, how the tongue shape changes, the cavity of the mouth changes, the flow of air changes, the neural currents change, the lung activities change, the lips rounding changes, nasal cavity, okay, air flow position changes. These are the technicalities of the Swara, Vyanjana, Alpaprana, Mahaprana, Guna, Vruddhi, Prakriti Bhava, Samyakta Akshara, Gunita Akshara, Padakruti, Varanakruti, Udata Udata Swarita. These are the technicalities which Panini has used. And the basis is Shiva Sutra, Varanakshara, Samamnaya. So if we have missed building our Sanskrit teaching today and connecting it to Shiva Sutra, Maheshwara Sutras, we have lost the tradition. We have to restore it back. This is one of the points very important for Vadatu Samskritam as a spoken language or the Shastra Bhasha and then for the Veda teaching, Veda Shikshana, Ucharana, Anucharana, Prayoga and all that as foundation for the Pratishakyas. So Shiva Sutra on one side goes to the IE Aksharamala and on the other side connects to Pratishakya and then on the other side to the Mantrakshara, Yogakshara for the Upadesha. Therefore, Shuddha Upadesha of Varanakshara Samamnaya is critical. This is what Karve is coming to from the Tabla side because losing Shuddha 
Varnakshara of Sanskrit is affecting the music tradition on his side. That is what he has taken for 30, 40 you know, long years to come and then connect it to the body movements, the Indriya, the brain, body, spine movements, the scientific study of today and all that. Therefore, uh, I will focus upon three simple words, what we are very familiar with. Varna, Akshara, Shabda. Okay? What is the difference between Varna and Akshara? Why do we call Shiva Sutras as Varna Akshara Samamnaya together? Why is it not Shabda Akshara Samamnaya? Why is it not Dhvani Samamnaya? There is a reason for that. In Vedanga, Shadanga model, Vyakarana is the third one. The basis is the Shiksha Shastra. And Shiksha Shastra uses the technical term Varnasvaraha, Matrabalam, Samasantanaha, Ityukta Shiksha Dhyaya. So when we study Vyakarana as anchored to the Varna key concept, every Pada as a Prakriti Pratyaya is Varna Kruti. This is Gita. Pashyame Partha Rupani Shatashotha Sahasrashaha. Nana Vidhani Divyani, Nana Varna Kruti Nisha. So for us, Shiva Sutra anchored learning of Samskritam is Nana Varna Kruti Prakriya. It is Prakruti Pratyaya Prakriya. It is not a script processing. So when Varnakshara Ucharana takes place, we are getting to how the mind-brain interface takes place. And if we don't understand that, we don't get the walk yoga occurring in our body as mantra japa. So that is the technicality of the Varna. Therefore, Shiva Sutra first is Varna Samamnaya. And what is Samamnaya? Why is it not Varanamnaya, Varana Veda? Amnaya is Veda. What is Samamnaya? All the four Vedas require the same Shiva Sutra, Prokta, Varanas. And then the modifications. If Shiva Sutra, Varana, Ucharana is not proper, then every Veda pronunciation goes wrong. Therefore, we have to get back to the Shiva Sutra Varna Samamnaya. Then second one. If this is Varna Samamnaya, what is the difference between Varna and Akshara? Have you ever contemplated on this particular thing? Difference between Varna and Akshara, which again is what Karve is pointing out. How does the Varna Spruti become an Akshara Spruti. Why do we call it Akshara Mala? Why do we say, if some person doesn't know, we say, Panuka, I, 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 I. So why do we say that particular thing? We say very clearly, if we know how A becomes A, how A moves to E, how we can combine R to E and then further extend that, that, are, that is the first two sutras of the Vyakarana, Vruddhi Radha Ech, Adeng Gunaha, and then that also gives us the It Sangana, importance of that which Achyut Karve brought up. This is not possible to understand by scripting. It requires phonation. Ucharana. And that Ucharana is a Chitta Vritti. Therefore, 
we have to anchor the Sanskrit studies for the Shuddha Ucharana of the Shiva Sutra, Varna Samamnaya and the Akshara Samamnaya. So this is the entire message of Paspashandhika in Patanjali where he concludes Paranaha, Upadeshaha, Shuddhaha, Patyante. The Sanskrit standard is a Shuddha Upadesha. The Desha Bhasha Upadesha is the Prakrita, separated. So when we teach Sanskritam using Desha Bhasha model, there will be Padavikrutis, Ucharana Doshas. And that Dosha has so much permeated today's Sanskrit, Sanskrit usage by adding anglicized language model. This needs correction and this is very important thing that Achyut Karve has brought out and he is referring to the Damaru and he is referring to the Tabla, Ucharada as a mechanical, physical, musical instrument. And how does he get that model? Panini referred to the Prani Shabdas, Chashaka, and then the peacock, and all the other animals as a standard timer for the pronunciation of the Varanas. In this case, the importance of Achit Karve's working is he is drawing that standard of timing to the Damaru and the instrument the Tabla. And he has done extensive work on that. When you say Dadahal, thin. How do you map that Akshara sound to the, um, the instrument based sound? This is integration of the Sangeeta, Sahitya, Kala as Bharata's Natya Shastra basis. So when we take Kavya and Shastra together as yoga to appreciate, we do need an anchor to the Shuddha Ucharana of Shiva Sutra, 14 of them as Maheshwara Sutras. And this is also important for those who practice meditation. Coming very specifically to the technicality of differentiating Varna and Akshara. Varna is there as Shiksha Shastra right from Upanishads. But when it comes to Gita, we have got a whole chapter which talks of Akshara Brahma Yoga. And how is Akshara defined in Gita? Akshara is defined in Gita as an answer to the question Kim Tat Brahma? Eighth chapter, first question Arjuna. Kim Tat Brahma? Pointed answer from Yogeshwara Krishna is Aksharam Brahma Paramam. This is the clue to study Gita as the basis of Vak Yoga, Gita as the basis to explore Jignasurapi Yogasya Shabda Brahmati Vartate. The clue for it is given in the 17th chapter Anudvega Karam Vakyam Satyam Priyahitan Chayat Swadhyaya Bhyasanam Chayva Vangmayam Tapa uchyate. So this is the yoga tradition of learning using Sanskrit called the Vag Yoga. The discipline is further expanded as Vako Vakyam where the meaning of the Veda Mantras are to be decided as per the Nirukti, the fourth of the Vedangas. So today's Sanskrit studies are lexicon based and not the traditional Nirukti based. 
So to get into the traditional nirukti base, we require shabda vyutpatti. Yeah, shabda will stay sadhu, shuddha. If the varanas and aksharas in that are true, how do we know that varana and aksharas, the character structure of the given word is a standard? The anchor reference is Shiva Sutra. So to understand Sanskrit Vyakarana, the technicalities of the it Sangha, to understand the technicalities of Tulya Asya Prayatnam Savarnam, to understand why Samruta Vivruta, we get back from A as the Vivruta Upadesha Karyaha to Samruta later. How do we move this Varanakshara's? Do we just look at it as a the Mukha Indriya, Mukha Nasika Vachana, which goes outside Bahyo Charana, Bahir Mukha, or Vaikari to Madhyama to Pashyanti to Para as the Mantropadesha, our anchor is still Shiva Sutra. So it is to the credit of Karveji for drawing our attention to the importance of Shiva Sutra and some of these very critical sutras. How to connect Shiva Sutra on one side to the Loka Aksharas as AIE, Akshar Mala, what we are practicing, Swara Vyanjana model, and then to the Sangeeta, Gita Aksharas as Sarigama, the Saptaswaras, where this Tal, Bol, Cheese, every other thing documentation comes, and then to the Pratishakya which is the foundation for the proper learning use of the Vedas and then to the Mantrakshara's which are needed for the Upasana. So this is where I have been fascinated by uh, Karaveji's work, his uh, videos, what he has documented, uh, looking inside the mouth, which needs a lot more study and uh, his uh, method of teaching uh, the Shiva Sutra Varanaksharas in the reverse way to facilitate, you know, a, a path breaking way of learning. And he has got enough experimentation with his uh, school children training and other things, how to impact the proper pronunciation with the local language, Marathi. And obviously it comes to trust of all the Indian languages. So this is where I would uh, stop and uh, invite any questions, comments, and connections to be made from your side. Thank you, Karaji and uh, Rastri Aru and all the other persons who have you know listened to this uh, as brief exposition, which I called as Vag Yoga, Samskrutam Nama Vag Yoga, Yogavat. Tasya Shikshanam, Yoga Vacha Palam Tasya, Yoga Bhasha Hi Samskrit. This is the karika which I have made for myself to uh, project, to you know, present uh, this particular understanding. And how does this connect to computers? IEE is not ABCD. So if you want to build voice integrated AI applications, we should know how the 18 types of the ana, that is ucharana of the akara, 18 different types are to be modeled and represented in the machine. English at best has five of them, not more than that. How are you going to represent the 18 and show the combinations in uh, uh, Sandhi, in uh, Prakriti Bhava, Lopa, Agama, Adesha? Very interesting study. Well, this part of it is science of sounds, which we have to develop from India, our own model. Why do we expect the IPA, IPA is International Phonetic Association to do this, or you know, a corporate uh, like Google or somebody to investigate. It is our language, we need it, we need the Shuddha Ucharana, and we have to do that. If we don't set our st language standards, well, 
obviously others would set and then we continue to have the Arjuna Vishada Yoga. So if we don't have to have that Arjuna Vishada Yoga for Samskritam, we need to get back to the anchor of Shiva Sutra as a foundation to train Samskritam for Loka Bhasha, Samskrita Sambhashanam, for Sanganaka Bhasha, for the computers, for Veda, Shikshana and Prayoga as Vedakshara and for yoga schools as Mantrakshara. Thank you.